So uh, now we have a very exciting session on uh, global climate simulation workshop. Okay, so uh, technology plays a major important role in the technology I mean, in the environment uh, and economy. So uh, it has in fact shaped the entire society, economy, and that's what I would be saying. So technology has caused many environmental and social problems, but also it also helped in. Uh, fixing many of the social and uh, environment problems as well. So technologies such as AI, machine learning, blockchain, IoT, geospatial mapping, all, all things are covering the fifth uh, industrial revolution as well as helping us fight the climate change in a better way and achieve our climate goals. Okay, so we have two exciting speakers here uh, who are going to walk through uh, our entire workshop of how technology plays an important role. So they're going to um, I mean, help us build a climate action strategy with En-ROAD. So En-ROAD stands for Energy Rapid Overview and Vision Support Climate Workshop. So an interactive climate action simulator to understand quickly and see the long-term efforts that climate action policies and actions can bring in. So the first speaker we'll be calling up is Amit Pandey. So introducing Amit, um, is a, he's a serial entrepreneur and a climate ambassador. He's currently building Do It Zero, D-I-Z, an eco action uh, platform for organization to engage and reward their employees and customers for environment friendly actions. So DIZ's goal is to drive uh, zero pollution, zero waste, and zero emission, net zero emissions. So Amit has been an entrepreneur for more, more than 18 years and founded and exited three tech-enabled businesses. So before proceeding entrepreneurial path, he worked at GE uh, for a decade as a president and uh, for dental and vision. And uh, he was also a um, uh, uh, completed his undergraduate from um, IIT uh, Bombay. Okay, he also has a MBA from IM Bangalore. So the second speaker we have here is actually Joan. Uh, Joan Fernandez is also a climate ambassador at Climate Interactive. So Joan is consultant at, and learning for for action fellow at uh, Terra Do. Okay, a global. Global, uh, global climate career and education platform, which aims in transition of 100, people, 100 million people to climate jobs. So with this introduction, I mean, jo Joan has done a lot of philanthropy and water, water and sanitation uh, uh, teams at Dasara. And he's worked uh, extensively in uh, funder management, donor education as fundraising for the National Fusion Sludge and uh, Septage Management um, Alliance. Okay, so it's a, it's a platform for um, our 30 organizations funded by Bill and Melinda Gates. So, um, Joan is, um, um, is a, was an intern with uh, Tata and he has also worked with um, uh, very, uh, I mean, Nobel laureate like um, Professor Mohammed Yunus and he's a graduate from Asoka University with a degree of computer science and uh, entrepreneurship. So, with this, like, I would like to uh, invite Amit to um, walk us through the uh, climate action um, uh, workshop. So I'm you. Uh, thank you very much, Kalyan. And first of all, let me thank uh, Piyush as well. Uh, Piyush is the reason that uh, Johan and I, we are here. Uh, Piyush reached out to the Climate Interactive uh, folks in the U.S. And then uh, Johan and uh, I were given this responsibility. Uh, what we will do is, you know, it's essentially both of us are certified ambassadors of the particular, you know, you know, the same organization. So what we have decided is we would kind of like tag team and be more like a joint thing. And uh, um, um, you know, I'm going to kind of let Johan kind of set the stage in terms of just making some uh, brief uh, uh, introductory kind of remarks, and then I'm, I will uh, both Johan and I will walk you guys through uh, the tool per se, and then we will try to kind of bring it all together. Uh, in, in, uh, you know, and we'll try to kind of accomplish this uh, within the next 45 minutes. So, Johan, uh, uh, why don't you get started? Take it away, please. Absolutely, and uh, thanks so much, Y community, for sort of having us here. Um, and, uh, you know, so over the next 45 minutes, what we'll do is, you know, we'll work together uh, to understand, you know, what are the different causes of climate change um, and the range of solutions that are needed to mitigate it, right? So it'll be very important for the audience, uh, you know, to interact with us because we want to hear, you know, from you in terms of different things that we'll sort of get into very quickly. Um, so please be very, you know, interactive on the chat. We only have 45 minutes, so it'll be very important that you, uh, that you contribute, right? Um, so the purpose of this workshop it's essentially a couple of things, right? So we want to create a scenario that sort of limits global warming to well below two degrees Celsius um, with the aim of sort of, you know, reaching 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels, right? And, you know, all of this has been agreed at the Paris Climate Agreement. Um, 
by the end of the workshop we want to leave you with insights on you know how to distinguish between high leverage actions versus low leverage actions to combat climate change um and uh, you know in terms of you know what is enroads right so the tool that we'll be running you in the next uh, few minutes so enroads is is a tool that was created by climate interactive which is an ngo based in the us um and the mit sloan school of management um and they built you know enroads using the best available science using data sources like the ipcc uh, and the international energy agency right and so therefore all of the references all of the equations all of the parameters are available open source on the internet even the tool is available open source so so in case any of you want to you know go through the tool later on and adjust any sliders and learn for yourself um you know feel free to do that and we'll also you know share that in the chat um but i think to quickly get us started amit if you want to take the group through you know what are the different uh, you know climate science in terms of where we're at right now and then we can you know deep dive into the tool and you know spend uh, a bunch of time on the tool itself so over to you amit uh thank you very much johan let me just share my screen uh, i suppose i have the uh, the ability to be able to do so right uh yes amit you would be able to share yeah thank you i'm seeing your screen okay wonderful so uh so this is the enroads uh, climate workshop okay. um uh, johan talked about the fact that we all uh, we are certified ambassadors of this organization called climate interactive and climate interactive has partnered with mit so what they have done is they have taken all of the climate science data from mit and the data sources that johan talked about and i've created a very robust interactive kind of a tool which we all can kind of uh, uh, in a way play with so to speak to really understand what is at stake uh, 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 you know with respect to global warming and most importantly what can be done both at uh, at a policy level as well as uh, getting a better understanding in terms of how each one of us can contribute to it, towards it in a very interactive kind of like a fashion so this session uh, will have three parts to it what i will do is very quickly over a five or seven minute uh, kind of like a time frame i try to just kind of set the stage from a context perspective most importantly get into the tool itself where johan and i would try to kind of uh, uh, give you guys a flavor of what the tool can do for you and then right at the tail end uh, johan would bring it all together and with some uh, concluding remarks so let's review what you know let, let's just kind of like take a step back and focus on what is what is at stake and and what's the science telling us uh, so from a scientific perspective to take a look at it for the million years or so that we have all you know that the, the earth has been around and, and you know that that we can track the data the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere was never the level above the level of uh, 300 parts per million and uh, 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 and if you take a look at uh, the 1880 kind of prime time frame and the 1880 i'm kind of using that as as a benchmark for for a simple reason that's when we had the full effects of industrial revolution kind of you know taking shape in terms of the steam engine in terms of the thermal power plant in terms of the introduction of the you know some of the ic cars and using uh, 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 you know you know you know the fossil fuels as a source of energy and when you take a look at that and and we also if you take a look at it for for a 100 year period right the carbon dioxide in the air went up all the way from uh, 290 all the way to uh, 337 so that's kind of like roughly a 16% increase over uh, the last 100 years but in the last 40 years alone from 1980 all the way to 2020 this has really gone up by a uh, 40% and we are basically at the level of about 420 parts per million so definitely some things have changed from a scientific perspective uh let's take a step back in terms of when we talk about so so the the, the global warming is happening it's being caused by the greenhouse gases So, what are the different types of greenhouse gases? Very quickly, uh, uh, the biggest chunk obviously is carbon dioxide, which we basically get from uh, burning of the fossil fuel, as well as the carbon dioxide that's trapped in the environment that gets uh, released. Uh, along with carbon dioxide, we also have methane that's creating a, a, a you know that that's that has got like a big impact. So, so that's something that we need to kind of control as well. And and, and there are a couple of other uh, greenhouse gases as well from. An, in terms of nitro di nitrous di dioxide as well as for any two gases uh once again very quickly where do we get the carbon dioxide from what are the bad guys uh, which are releasing this largely fossil fuels so we are talking about coal oil and gas are are the areas that if you want to kind of control the emission then these are the areas where we have to basically look at the consumption uh so 
so so we know now greenhouse gases are coming out uh, it's obviously kind of like you know you know the global temperatures are increasing the, already the temperature has gone up by 1.11 degree uh, centigrade and when we take a look at it the top 10 hottest years have been in this century so in the last 22 years we have had like the top 10 uh, year, uh, uh, hottest years in the last six years alone the top two hottest years have been around so that obviously the, the earth is warming and now uh, uh, you know we are seeing a significant amount of uh, temperature uh, change so so let's just take a step back and say what is the baseline if we did not do anything right so we just kind of like let the let it run the course in terms of whatever we are doing what is going to happen by the end of this century which is 2100 the temperature would have gone up by 3.6 degrees uh, Celsius. Now, 3.6 degrees Celsius in absolute terms may not mean uh, much, but the consequences are devastating. And that is what I would like to kind of highlight. Uh, uh, so the three degrees temperature essentially means that the Arctic sea ice is going to melt in two out of every three summers. The droughts are going to be a lot longer. And we are already seeing some of these effects kind of play out in our uh, in, 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 you know, right now in terms of droughts, in terms of wildfires, and all the devastating consequences of, uh, of climate change that we are seeing. A four degree centigrade is going to be significantly uh, a lot more uh, of impact. One of the key things uh, you know, which, we, which, which is happening right now, we've already seen it in the, in the floods in Pakistan. And uh, floods are typically all, always followed by the drought. And what, one of the key things how India, and, and the, particularly Northern India is going to get impacted is the entire Himalayan glacier uh, system is under threat. And, and, and once that collapses, uh, the majority of northern India basically gets its water from the Himalayan uh, glacier system, and that whole ecosystem is uh, going to get uh, impacted. So significant uh, consequences uh, if we do not address this. Uh, this is Shanghai today. This is Shanghai with 3.5 degree uh, Celsius. This is New York City. This is New York City with uh, uh, 3.5 degree uh, Celsius. Uh, this is the Wall Street today. This is the Wall Street uh, with uh, 4 degree centigrade uh, warming. Uh, this is London with uh, 4 degree centigrade of warming. Uh, Shanghai, once again, with 4 degree centigrade. Uh, we are already talking, you know, we have seen significant amount of wildfires that are happening. Now, obviously, we are going to see a lot of wildfires and there's going to be a lot of destruction. What we see here is only the physical risk, right? Physical transition where, you know, related to, to, to the wildfire. But there is something more important, which is called what I call as a transitional risk, right? Imagine all of this property that's getting destroyed, right? So, so the people who are living off, you know, obviously their property is going to get destroyed. There is also going to be a, a significant amount of impact on the financial markets if folks lose their property and they're not able to service their debt. So both the physical side as well as the transitional side risk is something that we have to uh, keep in mind. Um, so let's just talk very quickly in the interest of time, get into the tool uh, per se. Uh, um, and before I get into the tool, uh, we have talked about this whole concept of net zero. So, so, so that, I think it's very important to kind of you know, understand very quickly uh, what the net zero is. So imagine if this world is a big bathtub, right? So all of the, the greenhouse gases that we are emitting, right? That is all the net addition to the, to the atmosphere. But then parallelly, we are also removing uh, uh, greenhouse gases. But the rate at this point in time, the rate of addition versus the rate of removal, the rate of addition is significantly high, and that's the reason why it will continue to increase. So essentially, what we need to do is we need to get to a point where we can balance this out. We, we can we can start to take out uh, enough uh, of uh, carbon uh, enough of greenhouse gases, both with the help of reducing our consumption as well as uh, developing uh, nature-based kind of like a projects, and and see if we can uh, accomplish uh, net zero. Uh, status uh, so one one of the things that uh, uh, what 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 we what we talk about is anytime when you teach something to somebody people tend to forget but if they experience something if there's experiential learning that experiential learning goes a long way in terms of uh, understanding the subject matter so enroads is essentially essentially based on this whole concept of uh, uh, experiential learning uh, this chart is very very busy I wouldn't go into all of the like you know, let's not try to kind of like go into every uh, word of it. Conceptually, look at three different aspects, right? So, so, and that's how the whole En-ROADS tool is also kind of like built. One is how do we get our energy? So, the sources of energy supply, which are the coal, oil, and then also we are now you know talking about renewables or so. So, I think that's one bucket of energy supply. I think that's something we've got to keep in mind. 
The second part is how do we use our energy, right? So we use our energy to kind of go from point A to point B in terms of transportation. We use our energy to kind of like live in buildings, uh, you know, and work in factories, and then drive you know, overall growth. So that's like the second bucket. And then the third bucket is essentially in terms of uh, the land and the industry emissions that are coming out, as well as uh, uh, some of the, the techniques that we're employing to kind of reduce the, the greenhouse gases. So these are the levers that we have available to address global warming. And now we will see how we can play with these levers to be able to kind of address uh, uh, global warming. Uh, so this is the, uh, uh, the front screen of uh, the En-ROADS tool, and that is what you will see. On the left-hand side, what you see is the, the sources of uh, energy that you see in the different uh, uh, colors. And then on the right-hand side, you essentially see is the temperature. So if you don't, like I said, if you don't do anything, by the end of 2100, the temperature would increase to 3.6, and that's going to have uh, uh, devastating uh, uh, consequences. Uh, I'm going to move to the tool uh, per se. Um, and I think uh, in the meantime, you know, that Amit uh, pulls up the tool, um, what we'll request the audience is to probably, you know, put down in the chat um, different actions that either you as an individual have taken or you know, as a part of an organization, what are the actions that your organization have taken, right? I, I know that the YI um, community has a lot of different hubs, you know, in India, and therefore each hub uh, environment is, you know, one of the uh, biggest verticals, right? And you take a lot of different actions uh, every year. So if you can sort of put in chat, what are the different actions that you take um, to, uh, you know, for, for this issue, right? So afforestation is one of the biggest pointers you know which have sort of come up um and we'll probably give it you know a couple of seconds uh in maybe a minute or so just just to ensure that you know everybody can think about different things um and put on chat right uh, the government is also doing many different things so you can also talk about you know what is the government doing right now let's say in terms of you know electrification in terms of you know promoting energy efficiency so on and so forth and exactly, you know, yeah. yeah now I'm saying uh, whatever you all put on chat, that is exactly that we will run on the tool, right? So we want to actually use, you know, what you're thinking and see what is the impact of that, you know, solution or that policy on, you know, global um, rise in greenhouse gas emissions and therefore the rise in temperature. Thanks, Johan. So just go ahead and take uh, that minute or two. To put your thoughts down and and anything that's there in your mind, right? So so uh, and then we'll try to kind of work with that information. You see a lot of exciting um, options being popped up, like uh, from forestation, rainwater harvesting, and uh, increased renewables. Uh, bring your own bottle, car pooling, and zero waste kind of, and composting. So I think we're getting a lot of the afforestation uh, um, inputs. So we can probably, I think, start with that. But then Amit, what I'll do is I'll probably feed you a couple of different responses that we're getting um, so that we can try and, you know, get that onto the simulator. Um, and, you know, think as, 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 as far and wide as, you know, as you can in terms of what else is happening, right? Uh, plastic recycling, single-use, ban of single-use plastics is one of the bigger things as well. Right, that's probably happening right now. So, you know, you could probably input that on, onto the chat. Um, a lot of times people talk about, you know, changing your diet, right? Because our diet also tends to, you know, have a lot of different impacts. Um, and therefore, you know, going on to a vegan diet, for example. So if this is something that you've seen, put it on chat. If you've not seen it, that's fine. Um, and and uh, no, thank, thank you, Johan. This is, this, this is wonderful. So, uh, um, so I, I can, I can, let me get started and people can kind of, you know, you can keep writing whatever are your thoughts. So we'll kind of, you know, in the interest of time, we'll continue to kind of move forward. So let's, let's take a step back and say, what are we trying to do? I'm, I'm a very, I'm an engineer trained, you know, to kind of like work with data. And that is what I like. I like to kind of, you know, make a formula out of everything. So what are we trying to do? The first thing is if you look at the left-hand side graph, which has got all of these colorful bars, 
if you if you take a look at it, you divide the graph into two parts, and you say, hey, what are the bad guys, and what are the good guys? So if you take a look at it, the the bottommost bar, which is the chocolate bar, and then the mustard or the or the, uh, the, the 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 burnt orange um, um, uh, uh, layer, and the blue layer. So that's that represents coal, oil, and gas. So what we are trying to do is we are trying to reduce the consumption of that. So we really want to see by 2100, all of those things really shrink. And you want to kind of encourage the other parts, which is the green and the pink and uh, uh, the other new technologies. So we really want to kind of replace our sources of energy. I think that's one thing that we are trying to do. The second thing what we are trying to do is we are trying to get to a net zero, right? So, so the Paris Agreement says that by 2050, we want to get to net zero. So if you take a look at it, there are two lines that are running on the right-hand side graph, which is the blue, the black line and the blue line. What we want to see is we want to see that blue line really get to the zero level, right? So if we, if, if we can get to that, we can get to that point, then we say at least mathematically, at the two level, we have been able to kind of address uh, our global warming and that is what we are trying to, to get to. So, and, and at the end, we will try to show you uh, that. But let me just kind of, kind of get started with uh, some of the themes. So, so Johan, why don't you say one theme and I'm going to try to kind of, you know, work it, work on it on the simulator. And then at the tail end, I'm going to bring it all together to kind of bring it down to like a 1.5 or a 2 level and show the impact. Absolutely. So I think one of the biggest responses that we've gotten on chat is afforestation. People are talking and thinking about Miyawaki forest. So I think let's try, try that first. And then I think we can move to the other um, sliders. Right. So, so look at the, the big 3.6 degree temperature. That needs to kind of come down. And let's see if we didn't do anything else, we just went ahead and planted a whole bunch of trees, what is the impact is going to be? So I'm going to play with the afforestation tool and imagine we planted all of those trillion trees, right? So to speak, look at the temperature. It's just 3.5. It has made an impact, but every, every bit adds up. So it's, so, so, so it's a big change, but not enough, not enough to solve global warming. So the first thing is, Trillion trees alone will not solve the problem. And in fact, the message by the end of it, what we want to say is that, that one thing, there is no one solution to global warming. So trillion trees alone is not the solution to the global, global warming. But one more point is we cannot solve global warming without those trillion trees. So, so trillion planting trees alone would not solve uh, uh, on itself, but without uh, uh, planting trees, we also cannot solve. So that's kind of like the fact that is something that we want to kind of uh, uh, keep, keep in mind. Uh, uh, what's the next theme uh, that, that, that I should uh, uh, pick up, Johan? Uh, Got it. And yeah, maybe what you can do is, uh, I mean, people are also talking about EVs, right? So, yes. and um, so I think what we can do is we can, you know, play around with the transportation piece, you know, electrifying transport, because, you know, that's one of the biggest levers that people are thinking and talking about, even the government. So let's do that. Yeah. So the EV, EV story, when you take a look at it, Again, a significant impact. The, the temperature drop is from 3.6 to 3.4. So once again, a very, very big uh, uh, impact. And, and, and that's basically the EV story is uh, uh, very powerful. And as much as possible, we should go for EV. But EV is kind of like, you know, EV has got two parts to a problem, right? So one is we are decarbonizing or we are kind of like moving towards the EV, but then EV itself gets its power. So, so, so the source of the power itself we have to decarbonize the grid per se. So, and a lot of the people will come back and say, hey, you know, what is the point of using an EV when we are still getting like a thermal power? But there are two problems. So, so the best way, you know, how do you eat an elephant? You eat an elephant one bite at a time. So global warming is instead of trying to question everything, what we've got to do is we've got to take, okay, what is one step we take? What's the next one? So you solve the EV thing one, get as much EV as possible. That's one, one way to kind of you know, push it out there. The second part is decarbonizing the grid, where it's kind of you know, you know, you know, you know giving uh, as much subsidy to renewables, right? So you do that, you decarbonize the grid, you try to reduce coal. So all of these things, they basically work together. And now you see how every bit by bit, everything starts to add up. So, so that's, that's another uh, uh, part that I want to kind of you know, highlight. Uh, uh, let, me, let me take another uh, theme. I think, uh, Johan, if I... I think we saw on uh, the chat, you talk, we were talking about yeah. like plastics recycling, right? The recycling, the reuse. So largely, yeah. if you take a look at the circular economy, you know, so we, we, we talk about the, you know, the, the, the three R's of, uh, of, of, of kind of like reduce, reuse, and recycle. Very, very big impact. And, 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 and let's look at it from a tree perspective. So what happens if you, if you reuse, right? If you reuse, you need less of 
assuming you are using a furniture, right, and you keep on using, you need you need to cut less forest, right? So one of the one of the areas of the biggest impact that you get is deforestation, right? So de deforestation is a big impact of uh, circular economy, right? If you use circular economy, another thing what happens is you send a lot of less stuff to the landfills. And we know the methane, which is a very, very big problem because methane very quickly, methane's global warming. I think methane has one thing that I want to kind of highlight about methane is that the effects of methane is a lot more potent when it comes to uh, greenhouse gases. So for the same amount of uh, methane as carbon dioxide, its impact, its global warming potential is higher. But luckily, the methane over a period of while carbon kind of stays in the air, right? It's there. It's kind of like a forever thing, uh, like the diamond. You know, diamonds are forever. Uh, methane has an impact over a 20 or 30 year period. So if you ask me, the lowest hanging fruit is actually addressing methane because whatever we work on methane, we, we will see the impact right away. And that's why methane was a big focus area in the COP26. Uh, uh, so for circular economy, uh, uh, um, Methane would be significantly reduced because we are sending less stuff to uh, uh, the landfill. Another thing, uh, if you're using recycling more, and particularly plastics, right? So if you're recycling a lot of plastics, that will have an impact on uh, 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 the oil, oil consumption. So, so you know, you know, oil would be less as well. So that's another theme why uh, it's very, very important to recycle as much as possible. Uh, 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 you know, promote, promote kind of like a circular way of life. That's that's something which is very very important. Uh, let's pick one more theme before we start to kind of bring it all together. And and I saw uh, uh, Johan, you had, you know there were there were some people talking about like the veg thing, right? Uh, yeah. Is that is that a theme that's emerging? That's not emerging. I mean, I think that that's emerged. Uh, Pradeep is talking about that uh, diet and lifestyle in terms of you know how people are living and making an individual choice, uh, you know, to reduce their emissions. So let's let's try a vegan diet and see what happens with that then. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the, so the so the veg diet per se, again, uh, uh, you know, we say, hey, it's uh, it, it's climate friendly, uh, for the simple reason, if we if we uh, 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 you know if we, if we have to raise less cattle, right? So the biggest impact that we're going to see is in terms of uh, deforestation that, that 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 we have there. Uh, the sources of methane, right? So so when we say, how do we get methane? So methane actually comes on this planet. You know, you know, from three uh, different sources. The first one is methane is nothing else but the natural gas. So then you're trying to get the natural gas for your CNG or for your gas and everything. Then a lot of the wells they leave. Right? That's how through the industrial activity we get a lot of methane. Uh, the second uh, methane that comes in uh, is a big thing. Is that all of the livestock? Right? So the livestock essentially, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know when 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 they when they eat their their food, they belch or as as a part of their digestive process, one of the byproducts is methane. So a lot of the methane actually comes out because of the livestock. When you're trying to raise all these cows and you know all of the uh, animals for for meat, uh, that's the another source. And then the third source is basically it comes in from uh, landfills, right? So anytime when something is rotting, you can you can smell it and you know you know that there is a, there is a methane there. So it comes in largely from the landfill. So one of the biggest impacts you can reduce methane uh, 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 production of methane is uh, 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 if you if you move to like a more like a veg kind of a thing so so uh, methane essentially comes comes down because of the veg diet another thing if you take a look at it uh, what happens when you are moving a lot of the uh, animal products or and meat and everything right so the meat we know goes sour or goes bad very very quickly so what you need is to transport meat or to kind of store meat you require a lot of cold chain uh, and the minute you have a cold chain, the cold chain per se is very energy intensive. So if you have, if you really bring down uh, the consumption of uh, meat, then we will be able to get a lot of efficiency on the transport side because we don't have to now transport a lot of the, the what you call meat and everything. And, and we don't really, we can kind of like optimize our cold chain, so to speak. So once again, it has got a, a, a significant impact. So, so you can see, you know, these are some of the policy changes. I think before I move into kind of bring it all together, I want to say a little bit of like impact graphs, right? So, so uh, um, uh, how does this, while well, we saw this temperature change, but what are some of the impacts? And let me, let me, there's one thing that I want to show, which I'm sure this audience will be able to kind of understand and appreciate. So at three degrees centigrade, what, what is the sea level rise? I hope it comes. Yeah, very good. And let me pick our favorite city where all where Bollywood is. So 
I'm going to pick Mumbai, Johan City. <laughs> so this is, if you, if you take a look at it, right? This, these, are, this, these are the land that is at risk, right? So if you take a look at it, so the entire Navi Mumbai is basically at risk by 2100. So, the, so essentially what you're seeing right now, and, and, and this is a, one of the, actually the, the good thing about end roads is uh, that you can really see the impact that you're gonna see. And as we take all these policy actions, we will also see how much of risk we have been able to kind of mitigate. So, uh, so this is one of the, the, the impact graphs that I wanna really show. In fact, there are now tools available in the United States where you can really see, even if you're buying a property, Right, and you want to make sure that you want to get into an area where the, the climate impact is going to be less. Those tools are are evolving, and these are the kind of entrepreneurial opportunities for young people that are there. That you can really kind of do a little bit of a scenario analysis and bring this information uh, uh, for the masses. So this was one of the impact graphs that I want to show. Uh, the second impact graph I want to show, which is very very important, is uh, and I'm going to show it twice. This impact graph uh, um, is. Uh, species, right? So, so the world is not just for us human beings. We have a lot of other species that are there in the, uh, uh, in the world as well, right? So plants, insects, mammals, birds. If, if you take a look at it, the global warming is going to have a significant impact on them. So these, this is the, the, these are the species that will lose 50% uh, of their climatic range. So essentially, the entire biodiversity is at risk because of global warming. So this is, this is the area that we need to kind of uh, uh, address. And it's very important that we solve global warming, not just for ourselves, but for everybody who's uh, uh, all species that are there on the planet. Uh, in the interest of time, let me just kind of like very quickly now uh, say to get to the Paris Agreement goal, what are the things that we could do? We, could, we should definitely plant those trillion trees. We should, as much as possible, try to restrict uh, deforestation. As much as possible, we should try to uh, uh, reduce uh, methane, you know, you know, you know, through, through industrial activity as well as through you know, veg food or so. Uh, I'm going to come to the new technologies later. EVs are very, very super important to get all of those uh, uh, EVs going. We get as much as possible. We try to go for efficiency. I think I think that is something that's important. But efficiency in building in, in industry is very, very important. In fact, I don't know if some of you who have been kind of like keeping track of uh, some of the changes in the United States, uh, Biden administration has come out with like a very large package. And one of the areas they're focusing on is efficiency in building through heat pump and all. So this is an area where a uh, significant amount of uh, product, pro I mean, uh, you, know, we, we, you know, we can get like a bigger bank for the buck there. Once again, uh, as much as possible, we ele electrify. I wouldn't Economic growth is something we would not touch because, because what we need to do is we need to basically come up with a bigger way of life, right? So, 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 so there's a saying that we move from stone age, not because we ran out of stone, but we as human beings figured out a better way of life. So we don't want to say, hey, we don't want to you know, reduce all the consumption and everything. Can we get to a point where we can consume in a meaningful fashion, right? But still address global warming. I think that's what our goal would be. So I wouldn't touch uh, economic growth. Population something is is uh, 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 is kind of like reducing, so we can get some benefit from the population. Renewables is something we need to to as much as possible uh, increase. I think coal consumption is something if we can reduce it. Uh, oil consumption because of recycling. If we do this, we will get the the uh, the bang for the buck. So so is for natural gas. Increase bioenergy. In, in, in. Uh, carbon price is something which we, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like, you know, putting in a tax, but I think putting in, anytime you put in tax, you have to look into the equity aspect of it because tax kind of impacts everybody. So that's not like the first choice, but, but using new sources of energy, I think hydrogen is coming up in a big way. Both Ambani and uh, Adani groups are investing a lot into uh, uh, new technologies. So I think, I think new, new zero carbon is something which is uh, going to be important. As much as possible, we should use uh, the technology, uh, the new technology to kind of remove. And now you see, we can truly build like a world, which is now much closer to the Paris Agreement timeline of 1.5 degrees, right? So this, so something like this, if we did, uh, this could come together. I'm just gonna show you one graph and then I'm gonna turn it over to Johan uh, to, to, to bring it to closure. Uh, Yeah, I think I think the part the, the graph is already there. This is now you see 
a 1.6 degree uh, uh, world is a lot better for all of the species. So not only we have taken care of ourselves, we have taken care of ensuring that with those trees and everything, the biodiversity is around and we, we truly can continue to make sure that civilization continues to move forward. I'm just, let me just kind of close this. I'm going to stop sharing in the interest of time and turn it over to Johan to kind of bring closure. I apologize, I took a little bit longer. So uh, thanks for Go ahead, Johan. No, no, that's very useful. Thanks for that, Amit. If you can actually just pull up the graph again, I just want to you know, talk about it uh, for a second. Um, and so there are two very interesting concepts that I think all of us need to keep in mind while we build our own scenario, right? So I will encourage, you know, different YI hubs to use the tool in your respective meeting and run this workshop, right? And Amit and I are happy to have that conversation and figure out if we can run a workshop individually for your groups. But even if we can't run this workshop for yourself and see what's happening. Two important things to note is one is multi-solving, which means each of these policies, you know, while it targets its individual area, it also can solve other things. For example, if we were to, were to let's say, tax coal, um, what would happen, right? And so coal is uh, responsible for a lot of air pollution in different areas, right? So if you were to tax coal and therefore reduce the demand for coal, what happens? You know, so air pollution goes down, PM 2.5, PM 10 particles goes down. What that means is, you know, our, our air is a lot more cleaner. What that also means is, that um, health costs go down, right? Because a lot of people don't get asthma, they don't fall sick, right? So that's one example of multi-solving. Now, as you saw in terms of deforestation and afforestation as well, it's very important, right? Because we have trees, but apart from that, what happens, right? We also have a lot more biodiversity because of that, right? Um, another important thing to note is equity in the sense that each of these policies has winners and losers. Right. So some people win because of a policy, some people lose because of a particular policy. Some people can afford when a particular policy is, let's say, implemented. So, for example, let's say if you were to do electrification of vehicles. Right. And the question comes, who can buy these vehicles? Right. And because the costs are so high right now, not everybody can purchase these vehicles. Right. Only, you know, let's say the, the rich folks right now can purchase it. And then, you know, when unit economic sort of scales up, then other people can sort of afford it. Right. So I think it's important to think about this lens as well, even in terms of, you know, our fuel distribution, etc. Who can afford renewable energy right now right? and who cannot afford renewable energy? So the, the point that I'm making is that it's important for, you know, people to play their part uh, to sort of, you know, ad adopt and adapt to newer technologies quicker. So it's important for us and different businesses and corporations to to, to understand the urgency because, you, you know, we're in 2022. We have eight years, you know, till, till 2030, and that's when we need to reduce our emissions by half, which means that, you know, eight years is not a very quick, I mean, it's, it's not long, right? It, it's it's going to happen in, in no time, which means that all of these different actions that you and I take as a group, as a collective needs to be much faster because, you know, we need to understand that a lot of these, you know, different things in the world take time, right? So, for example, afforestation, it takes time for trees to grow. And that, you know, time period can be anywhere between 20 years to 40 years for, you know, these trees to absorb carbon dioxide in the first place. It takes time for electric vehicles to replace fossil fuel based vehicles, right? It takes time for our energy grid to not be dependent on coal uh, and, and, you know, the other fossil fuels, but then be, you know, replaced by nuclear or be replaced by renewable energy, right? So that's the urgency is in terms of, you know, what I'm talking about. Now, what I'll do is I'll quickly, if I can share screen uh, and Amit, if you can stop sharing for a bit, what I'll do is I'll, I'll talk about, you know, what individuals can do and, and, you know, what organizations can do so that, you know, it's, it's a bit more um, relevant right now uh, for us. So looking ahead, right? So, you know, we have the tools, we have everything that we need in terms of, you know, renewable energy. We have all the different technologies that, you know, that Amit sort of spoke about as well. Solar and wind are growing and are getting cheaper and cheaper, you know, especially in the last 20 years. Corporations are talking about investing in clean energy. Countries are stepping up. States are stepping up. But what is important, right? The, the very important missing link is you and I, you know, general people. We need to be more educated about it. We need to demand for solutions from our government, right? Because uh, each of the things that we do in terms of purchasing power, in terms of votes, it needs to be on this critical problem that, you know, that we are facing as a civilization 
it's not only india that's facing it people you know across the world are sort of facing it right um it's important to note that there's also a bit of optimism that we need to have right so different organizations are stepping up you know h&m has announced targets microsoft has announced targets but what about the others right this is probably only you know top 100 can you know uh, companies or thousand companies but what about the msme segment you know what about small businesses everybody needs to start thinking and talking about each of these things right and one way of also doing this is you know by by organizing and by talking about you know each of these things in in different parts so in terms of insights right of a couple of things that i want to point out one is as amit showed you on the slide it takes more than one seed to plant a garden which means that it takes more than one solution to achieve what we want to achieve right so just afforestation or just buying an ev is not going to solve it right another thing that's important is also you know um in in all of our scenarios um fossil fuels need needs to be kept in the ground right as as amit also showed you so that's one of the you know key components um there are you know many other low leverage actions which i won't talk about but essentially what can you do as an individual you can talk about climate change you can educate yourself right that's one of the biggest things that you can sort of do as an organization what you can also do is you can do a carbon audit of your respective company right it's important to understand where is our carbon emissions coming from and where is it going right and therefore then create very aggressive targets uh, for our, our companies and therefore try and implement these targets uh, with different solutions and another important point is to be very wary of greenwashing as well there's a lot of that happening um around so through the workshop it's important for you and i to realize what is greenwashing and what is not right so for example you know investing in technology is very very important but we need to be very wary about what is the kind of technology that people are investing and talking about so i think that that's a bit from me and amit if you want to also you know share a few of your thoughts and insights before we wrap up uh yeah so uh so quick five point summary climate is changing we are all responsible as human beings uh the impacts are very very devastating and the time to act is now and there is no one solution so we got to work on each and every front thank you very much kalan over to you please yeah thank you amit and uh, joan uh, so it was very uh, impactful uh, walk through of uh, how end road simulation helps understand like what actions we take and what's the impact that we create so it was beautifully started with the emissions uh, being greater than uh, the net removals which is what we need to like uh, be very wary about and that's where all our actions should come uh, i mean um, be focused on so that's, that's a very good thing and uh, great, great to see that like uh, it's not a single point solution like it's a multi solving like uh we need to do carbon audit as well as be aware of uh, aware about our carbon footprint and focus on energy efficiency and reduction of methane and gases and how these creates impact on not just only human climate but also the lifestyle of i mean the life of all the other um uh, occupants of this uh, world kind of so that was very uh, good and uh, it was very uh, excited to see that the audience were also very participative they threw in a lot of ideas right from diet and uh, minimal plastic and reduce gear gas usage and uh, suv usage and all so let me ask a few questions to you amit and joan and also like we will also uh, given like we are time positive now like um, i hope like we also achieve the same with the climate uh, change as well like uh, global warming like we become uh, temperature positive uh, very soon kind of um, so uh, one of the question is like see like we are seeing like lot of technologies uh, simulation everything is available okay so how can youth in their local places like uh, take uh, be very about inroads and the impact that it creates and how they can do it like one thing is like they can run through the simulation understand the impact and then do it like is there anything specific that you want to highlight uh, amit and uh, joan uh sure i think uh, yeah, go ahead johan you want to go first and uh, hey you are the youth so <laughs> you want to do that I, I, go ahead <laughs> absolutely i can i can quickly make a point um it's important for us to think about what is our profession in our daily lives what are we doing for the 8 10 hours of our day right um so what i would say is get into a climate profession get a climate job that's one of the biggest leverage actions that the youth can take right now and uh, you know right now purpose and profit is inter interlocked in the sense that you can make money while you're also contributing to a lot of impact right so that's one of the biggest leverage actions and you know as as terra dot do as well in terms of what we're doing 
we say that every job is a climate job it depends on what lens you use right so if you are into manufacturing if you are into software development if you are into accounting if you are into banking finance each of this has a climate lens so think about you know climate from that perspective um over to you amit thank you well i i'm going to build on what uh, johan just said so i like i said you know you know i've been around for some time now so uh, uh, for some of you you know who've been around the dot com time you know we used to talk about these are online businesses these are offline business over the last 20 years all businesses are now digital business and 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 now so so why am i making that point so right now we talk about sustainability and climate change and everything as a stand alone thing but what's going to happen to yohan's point every job is going to be focused on sustainability every product or service has to become eco friendly every business process has to become eco friendly so i think the what the youth can do is one is obviously understand this part get all of the right uh, uh, training the right set of tools and then essentially engage in whatever job that they are doing they are doing it in a sustainable fashion i think that's one thing that they could do i think the second biggest uh, impact that the youth can make is actually talk about it right so the biggest thing that people say well you can you can make meaningful choices at your own individual level but how you spread the awareness how you get engaged in the community how you get engaged with your uh, political leaders in terms of kind of like demanding right uh, 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 you know that, that that hey the world is for everybody and we need to make sure that we we are leading a sustainable way of life um, i think that's very very important so so become more active and more vocal about it. that's about it thank I you very much nice nice amit and joan like uh, glad that uh, the new perspective of climate jobs uh, by joan was really appreciative and uh, sustainable lifestyle uh, by amit is a really good answer uh, so while we still wait on questions from uh, audience uh, i have one question with regard to the um, uh, simulator i mean the simulator that we had uh, see like deep i mean deforestation of forestation or reduction of deforestation and increasing a forestation um, uh, even though like we have a lot of uh, uh, impact that we visibly see but in the, the impact that it creates on the temperatures is very minimal like uh, we saw that just only a minus uh, 0.02 degree of reduction kind of so uh, but one thing that that we saw is like mainly on coal oil and natural gas so uh, what was your recommendation on um, uh, both from the land and industry emissions and the energy supply perspective because that's what the inflow and outflow majorly is about right so amit do you want to take it up sure sure i think i think i think uh, the the you know we we did kind of we went one by one to really show the difference but actually that's not the accurate representation so one should not say trees do not really matter or they matter less because at the end of the day it's a, it's a it's a what is what is at stake and in fact that's what and rose is good for it's what is called a system dynamics so the world is basically a system right it's kind of like a balloon right if you press somewhere somewhere else it'll show so until let's we really understand all parts of it right so so when you when you uh, uh, that's a way to look at this so i would not so, so each and every levers that we talked about each and every policy changes or each, each and every behavioral changes or the lifestyle changes that we talked about they all add up and that's the point that we want to make that there is no silver bullet right so 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 each one of us have to basically work on multiple fronts to be able to kind of address that and i wouldn't take these out and say this is more important than others absolutely the we know the bad guys are the fossil fuels so the earlier we try to drive the consumption down and that is very easy to measure right so, so we can say how much of how much we are consuming the minute that metric comes down we know for sure that yes global warming is getting addressed but that me- that measurement is very difficult to address because there are so many things that are dependent upon it. equity consideration different countries different process so it, 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 it's a tougher problem and that's why they say the global warming is tough because of three reasons right because a it's global b it's 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 essentially entrenched in our prosperity so before 1880 this was not an issue as we became prosperous as we got cars as we got bigger homes right this issue has come up so that's and the third thing is it's, it's kind of like ticking so we got to basically address all of these things both on the consumption side as well as on the process does that answer your question yeah very well very well amit and uh, nicely answered as well so uh, uh, we, i mean given the interest of time like we have few questions uh probably i'll let you i'll just wa- read it out for you like uh, although we understand that there is a paris accord in place uh, we see that the adoption of all countries is not the same so anyone want to give a small take around this and uh, uh, the question actually is like how do we adopt parlance or common ground for all economies and countries big or small to do their bit 
I can probably take that, Ramit, and if you Absolutely want to chip, if you want to chip in. Um, so I think it's important to understand um, how countries, different countries, have contributed to emissions, especially since 1950. And if you make, and there are a lot of these graphs available, and we could have also shown it to you. But if you see, you know, what's happened is Europe. U.S., Canada, all of the developed economies have consumed way more energy and are contributing way more than, let's say, India has. Right. So it's important for you know developed economies to rapidly reduce their energy consumption now and over the next couple of years, which is why a lot of countries you know have set you know for themselves net zero goals and so on, so on and so forth. It's important, therefore, also for the lesser developed countries, let's say in Africa, in Asia, and other geographies, to be able to get their fair share of energy right and to be able to you know develop as much as let's say the developed world has because at this point of time it's it's very important to note that this transition that we're seeing from you know this old world to a new world which is going to be you know completely clean powered etc needs to also be in a just fashion so it it there needs to be a just transition in terms of you know who are the winners and losers of this as well right and we want everybody to be on an equitable field in terms of quality of life in terms of you know, being able to have access to basic resources, and that's obviously not happening right now in our current world. Right, and all of you do know and have you know examples that you can share in your individual level. So it's important for countries to be able to agree on that. And I think COP twenty seven, which is you know going to happen in Egypt in the next few months, is going to be very important because what will happen over there is basically the developed countries will talk about you know um, something called loss and damage in terms of. You know, contributing financially to the lesser developed economies in terms of money, right? So that you know, Africa, Asia countries essentially can step up their renewable renewable energy commitments and you know uh, transition faster to a you know carb less carbon intensive economy. Um, yeah. Thank you. Amit, Thank you, if you want to add. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, um, uh, I think Johan has kind of like covered the uh, um, you know all aspects of it. And uh, 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 I think I think I think some of these initiatives at the global level in terms of the COP or so are kind of laying out the guidelines. I think the good news is now that every country has a stated goal, including India. When India has talked about like 2070 or something like that or, or so, but I think with what what we will see is that we will also see as we move forward, we will see recalibration, right? Because because the the, the one good thing is that the world recognizes that we do not have much time. I think I think on that part we all agree. I think the transition in terms of how do we get to that new world is something and, and in such a fashion that on a day-to-day -day basis, there is minimal impact to the, to, to, to the way of life. I think that's the part each of the government they are struggling on, right? But I think, I think, I think with, with, with every passing day, I think, I think we see this movement kind of accelerating and hopefully we'll be able to get there uh, uh, sooner than later. Thank you. Thank you, Amit and Jovan. Um, uh, the other question is most, I mean, it's not a question, more of a recommendation. So we'll just move the closure. Um, so thank you, Amit and Jovan, like for a very wonderful uh, workshop, like how to use inroads. And uh, it was really informative on like what action to take and what action not to take. So that was really information informative to the youth and uh, climate jobs is uh, one of the new perspective for the youth to adopt as well. So very well uh, done. So today uh, we come to the closure of the day one of the Climate Action Week. 